Okay, so here we go. We already took a quiz on solving simplified equations that have a variable on one side. Um, but I want to continue solving simplified equations that have a variable on one side, but more so that involve fractions. And we're going to build up with some simple e one-step equations, move on to two-step, and then to multi-step with uh, fractions involved. So on this class opener that you guys are working on, um, these are all one-step equations up until uh, number six. So let's begin with number one. You see number one reads 2x equals eight. Now we could all think about this in our heads. Two times a number equals eight. What's a number? Four. Four. We already know the answer is four. But I don't want you to just write the answer. Right now I want you to practice getting rid of things uh, by doing the inverse operation. So when you see 2x, that really means two times x. And the way to get rid of multiplication of two in front of x would be to do the opposite, which is division. And of course, we're going to do division with a fraction bar. So you divide the left side by two, which got lighter. It's off balance. What you do to one side, you must do to the other side to maintain the equality. So uh, x equals four. And there's your answer for the first one. If you wanted to double check it, all you have to do is plug in four right there, two times four. It really is eight. Number two, it says x minus two equals six. What do I do to get rid of that minus two? Add two. Add two, all right, plus two. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other to maintain the equality. The twos cancel out. What do I have left? The x comes down, the equal sign comes down, and six plus two is eight. And there is your answer, x equals eight. Uh, the next one says x over three. That really means x divided by three. So again, your goal to solve any equation is to get x by itself, right? You want x equals a number. You don't want x divided by 3 equals a number. You just want x by itself on one side of the equal sign. So how do I get rid of this divided by 3? Uh, multiply, multiply by 3. And it's also important to multiply with the numerator. That's right, like you said. Thank you so much. So uh, what I do to one side, I do to the other side, multiply by 3. Now, in reality, you're not really even multiplying because when the three is in the numerator position divided by three on the bottom, three divided by three really is one. So that cancels out and I have a beautiful x left over. That's our goal to get x by itself. The equal sign comes down and six times three is 18. By the way, uh, if you are not good with multiplying or adding or subtracting integers, positive and negative numbers, please use a calculator, right? We got calculators. Pro I don't have enough, as many calculators for everybody where everybody could get one, but I do have a drawer full of calculators. Um, I do recommend buying a scientific calculator um, that could easily add and subtract positive and negative numbers. Those are like, you know, six, seven dollars Walmart. Get one of those if you struggle with multiplying and dividing. Anyways, uh, number four, we have five times x, and I don't want the multiplication of five, so I'm going to do the opposite, which is divide by five. And what I do to one side, I do to the other side, divide by five. And this is where people freak out. There's nothing left on the left side, x equals. Now, if I had 20 divided by 5, that would be great. That would be a negative 4. If I had a 10 divided by 5, that would be great. That would be a negative 2, right? The negative 10 divided by 5. But right here, you have negative 2 divided by 5, so you can't really do it. Just leave it. Yeah, negative 2 fifths. So there's our answer. X equals negative 2 fifths. Okay? And again, you could use your calculator to double check your answers, right? You could actually type in on your calculator 5 and then open up some parentheses and inside the parentheses, you could put negative 2 divided by 5, close parentheses, hit equal, and you should have a negative 2 as an answer if you wanted to verify your answer, OK? Um, number 5, it's so easy that you might get confused, right? You don't want a negative x. The goal is to get x by itself. You don't want the negative sign. So we could multiply both sides by negative 1. You could divide both sides by negative 1. But the bottom line is you, you, you want to change it to a positive x. So if you change it to a positive x, it's going to change to a negative 3 fourths. Any questions? No? Moving on to number six, we finally get to a multi-step problem, or actually two-step problem instead of one, because it says 2 divided by 3x equals 4. Now, if you don't want that divided by 3, it would be nice if you had a, a 2x, if you didn't have of the 2 divided by 3x. If it were just a 2x, you would divide by 2. So yeah, we could get rid of that division of 3 by multiplying by 3. Both sides. Both sides. The 3's cancel. That's absolutely right. So we got 2x, which is 2 times x, equals 12. You want to get rid of that multiplication? Divide by 2. Divide by 2, which is x equals 6. And there's your answer. 
And once again, if you wanted to type it into your calculator, um, this is what I would do like to, to type in this to, to verify that this in here works with the calculator. I would actually just to let you know, I would open up some parentheses and I would type in two and then the division button and then three and then close the parentheses and then open up another parentheses for the X and plug in your six and then hit the equal button. And that should be the answer for, okay? Parentheses, two divided by three, that's a two thirds. Open up some parentheses with no sign between, that's multiplication of X and you're plugging in six into X. Hit the equal button and you should get the answer for. And if you do, then you know you got the right answer. Finally, to number seven, this is a multi-step problem. What do I do first? Plus five, okay. Not yep, that guy's not important, right? X is what's important. The fractions with the X, kind of important. Hold off on that till later. Get rid of this guy first. So that cancels. What you do to one side, do to the other side. You're gonna add five to the negative two. So what I have left is negative three fourths X equals three. Okay, now I wanna get rid of this fraction. And here's the bottom line, guys. A fraction is a division problem. So you get rid of division with multiplication. You could technically get rid of any fraction by multiplying everything by the denominator of the fraction that you want to get rid of. So I'm going to multiply both sides by what? Negative four. By uh, negative four or positive four. If you want to get rid of the negative all at once, yeah, negative four. I'm just going to do a baby step at a time, multiply both sides by four. That will give me a negative three X left over when the fours cancel out. I have a negative, negative three X left over. I write that up here. Equals three times four is 12 equals 12. And now for my final step, negative three times x is 12. Divide, divide by negative three, divide by negative three, x equals negative four. negative four. There you go. And of course, you could type in the negative four in parentheses here. You could put this in parentheses, negative three, divide by four in parentheses, times the negative four in parentheses, and then minus five, hit the equal button. It should show you negative two as the answer. Anyway, um, there is more to it than what we've done here. Let's move on to the next set of questions. I apologize. Let's take a, a, another minute or two on this question number seven that we just did. All right. Um, w does everybody understand how we got the answer number seven? Yes. yes? Okay. I want to explain something else. Let me rewrite number seven right here. You don't have to do that, but just watch me. Um, there's the equation uh, negative three fourths x minus five equals negative two. Another option could have been to multiply everything by four, right? I mean, I know I say that, yeah. The 3 fourths is with the X, kind of important, so get rid of this guy first. That, that's the easiest, that's the best option for you. But if you really, really, really wanted to get rid of the fraction first, you could, which I don't recommend, uh, and again, you could get rid of the fraction by multiplying everything by the denominator 4, and uh, including that minus 5. If you didn't get rid of the minus 5, you'd have to multiply everything by the denominator 4. And check this out, it cancels. Again, you don't have to copy this down, I just want to show you a different road to the same place. Uh, the four canceled, I have a negative three X left. I have minus 20, I have equals negative eight. So obviously this is a longer path. It's not as quick, it's not as fast, and even the numbers are bigger. So I, I wouldn't go with this route, but I'm showing you that you could if you wanted to get rid of any fraction by multiplying everything by the denominator of that fraction. And then you could continue solving, add 20, add 20. You'd get negative three X equals uh, 12. And if you divide both sides by uh, negative three, you'll get x equals negative four. Same answer as before. I just want to show you an alternate way of doing it instead of the original way. The original way is the best. You want to get rid of the minus five, go plus five, plus five. You have a super easy equation. Multiply both sides by four to get rid of the fraction. But you could have, if you wanted to, gotten rid of the fraction first, but you have to multiply everything by four. Right, so it's better to go with the first option. So why the heck am I teaching you this? This is the reason why I wanted to show you that alternate path, okay? Why, because when we're working on this one, your first uh, instinct will be to get rid of the minus three, huh? Right, but minus three, you go plus three, plus three, but then you gotta add a number with the fraction. I mean, this one's pretty easy to add, three plus half is three and a half, but let, let's not go that route. Let's go the, the alternate route of getting rid of the fraction by multiplying everything I'm talking about everything by the denominator of the fraction that you want to get rid of. So I'm going to get rid of the fraction 1 half by multiplying by 2, and the 3 multiply it by 2, and the 1 half multiply it by 2. Multiply everything by 2. That way, the 2 on top divided by 2 on the bottom 
cancels out. You have a simple 1x left. You don't even need the 1 in front. You could just write x, um, which I'll do. I'll erase it. There you go. So I just have x. And then minus 3 times 2 is 6. And over here, the 2 and the 2 also eliminate. And I have an equal 1. So I, instead of adding 3 to both sides and ending up with a 3 and a half over there, I just decided to get rid of the fraction right from the start. So I'm going to get rid of the minus 6 by adding 6. Adding 6, what I do to one side, do to the other side, right? I end up with x equals 7. There's my answer to number 8. All righty, copy down number 9. I'm going to pause it while you guys copy it down. I know you're thinking, what the heck? Why would you write 9 two times? Why did you duplicate it? I want to show you two different roads to the same place, all right? And you get to pick one, OK? Uh, there's always a shortcut, the fastest. But if you don't like that fastest route, then you could go the long route. OK, number 9, first option. Let's get rid of all the fractions, one fraction at a time, OK? So which fraction would you like to get rid of first? Uh, three. The two thirds? Yeah, OK. So how would I get rid of this two thirds by multiplying everything by three? Multiplying everything by three. Okay, I want to get rid of the fraction, right? So it doesn't look like fractions. So you got regular numbers. So I want to multiply the two thirds times three, but I also need to multiply this first fraction by three and the four by three, everything by three. Now, what happens with the three and the three? They cancel out. They cancel out. Okay, let's do that. Put a line through it. Three divided by three is one. So bless you. I end up with a nice, beautiful plus 2 right here. The equal sign comes down. Uh, over here, 4 times 3, that's 12. That's nice. But over here, does this 3 cancel with that 2? No. no, it doesn't. So I actually have to multiply 3 times the numerator 1. What's 3 times 1? Three. It's 3. So I'm going to put that 3 over 2. I'm going to leave it as 3 over 2 with an x right next to it. <coughs> Are you with me? OK, so we got rid of one fraction, right? Now let's get rid of the other fraction by multiplying everything by 2. Or we could also move this 2 over here, right? We could move the 2 over first. It's up to you. Do you want to get rid of the fraction or move the 2 over? Move the 2 over. Move the 2 over. OK, so let's get rid of that 2 by subtracting 2, subtracting 2. My new equation will be 3 halves x equals uh, 10. And then to get rid of the 3 over 2, which is really a division problem, 3 divided by 2, I'm going to get rid of that fraction by multiplying by the denominator 2. And you got to multiply everything by 2. And there's only the left side and the right side right now. There's no other terms. So we have uh, 10 times 2 equaling 20. And on the left side, the 2 over 2 becomes 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. It cancels out. So we have the nice, simple equation 3x equals 20, which is really 3 times x equals 20. So to get rid of that multiplication of 3, we divide by 3, divide by 3. And x equals, it would be nice if that would have been a 21. 21 divided by 3 is 7. But we got 20 over 3. So we're just going to leave it 20 over 3. That's an improper fraction. You could also write it as uh, it goes in 6 times. That'll be 18 with the remainder of 2 over the original. So this, here's another option. x could also equal 6 and 2 thirds. Technically, if you wanted to write it as a decimal, 6.33333, that's also a correct answer. But anyways, my point of writing number 9 two times is to show you how we get rid of one fraction at a time, or we could get rid of all fractions at the same time. Okay. So if you want, or if you're comfortable with this first method, that's cool. But if you want to go even a quicker route, which if you don't feel comfortable with, then don't do it. Right? But here's a quicker route. You have two fractions. They're both the denominator uh, 2 and the denominator 3. So I need a lowest common denominator. What would the lowest common denominator of 2 and 3 be? 6. 6. So if I multiply everything by the LCD, if I multiply by 6, multiply by 6, multiply by 6, multiply everything by the LCD, it'll get rid of all fractions at the same time. Now think about it. You have 6 up on top divided by 2 on the bottom. What is 6 divided by 2? Three. It's 3. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to divide 6 by 2, and I'm going to put a 3 up on top because 6 divided by 2 is 3. What is over here? 6 divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is? 2. two. two. So put a 2 up on top. And of course, 4 times 6 is 24. So let me rewrite what I have. But what is it that I have left over? I have a 3 times 1x. What is 3 times 1x? 3x. 3x. So we have a 3x 
And then over here, I have no more fraction, but I have 2 times 2, four. 4. And of course, 4 times 6 is 24. So you see how we got rid of both fractions at the same time? <coughs> it's up to you. You could get rid of one fraction at a time, like, oh, I want to get rid of the 2 thirds, multiply everything by 3. But then ultimately, you're going to have to get rid of this denominator of 2 by multiplying everything by 2. Or right from the start, denominator 2, denominator 3, Get the LCD, 6, and multiply it by everything. 6 by everything, and it'll cancel out all your fractions. And you're going to end up with the same answer if you kept working this through. Uh, minus 4, minus 4, that'll be 3x equals 20. So divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 20 over 3, which is exactly what we had right there. OK, um, let's move on. Sorry if that was fast. But we'll see some more of that right here. Check that out. Okay, so again, I have two number 10s. Why, why do I want two number 10s? I want to show you two the two different ways. Uh, one way of getting one fraction at a time. Let's do that first. Which fraction do you want to get rid of? Two-thirds. Two-thirds. Okay, how do I get rid of two-thirds? I want to multiply everything by? Three. Okay, this times three up on top. This times three up on top. This times three up on top. My first fraction right here, the three and the two do not cancel. So I actually need to multiply three times one and put it over two. So my first fraction will change to 3 over 2x. Are you with me? What about that second fraction, the 3 over 3? That really does cancel out. I have a nice, beautiful plus 2 left over. And the last one uh, over here, we have the equal sign. And the 3 and the 4 do not cancel. So I actually need to multiply. 3 times 3 is 9 and put it over 4. That's right. So 9 over 4. So I got rid of one fraction, the 2 thirds. How did I get rid of the 2 thirds? I multiplied everything by the denominator. So I have another fraction right here. Let's get rid of this one. Uh, how do I get rid of this one? Multiply everything by what? Two. By 2. So I'm going to go times 2 up on top, times 2 right here, times 2 over here. I will end up with the 2's cancel, 3x plus 2 times 2 is 4. And over here, uh, you could say 2 over 4 and reduce it to 1 over 2. Or you could multiply 9 times 2 and get 18, and 18 over 4 reduces down to 9 fourths anyway. It's up to you. Okay? Or you could even leave it as a 4 if you want. Right? But I am going to say that 2 over 4 reduces down to 1 half. So on the right side of my equal sign, what do I have left up on top? I have the 9 times 1, which is 9 over 2. So I really have a 9 over 2. 18 over 4 would be the same thing. It reduces down to 9 over 2. And now for the last step, I want to get rid of that last fraction. What do I do? Everything Multiply everything by 2. Times 2, times 2, times 2. I end up with a 6x plus 8 equaling cancels out 9. Woo! That was a lot of work to get rid of three fractions, right? Okay. I want to just pause it there, right there because I already know you know how to subtract 8, subtract 8, divide by 6, divide by 6. But I'm going to go back to the original. I'm going to get rid of all the fractions at the same time by looking at the 2, the 3, and the 4 and thinking of the lowest common denominator of 2, 3, and 4. If you are not too good finding the lowest common denominator, think of the biggest fraction, the biggest denominator that is 4. Could you change 2 to become a 4? Yes. Could you change 3 to become a 4? No. No. Okay, so let's take that biggest one and double it. 8. Could you change 2 to become an 8? Yes. How about 3 to become an 8? No. No. Okay, so triple it. 4 times 3 is 12. Could you change 2 to become a 12? Yes. Could you change 3 to become a 12? Yes. So the LCD is 12, right? The LCD is 12. LCD 12. So if we multiply everything by that LCD, put a times 12 on the first fraction, times 12 on the second fraction, times 12 on the third fraction, on the first fraction, 12 divided by 2 is what? 6. six. Okay, so 6 times that 1x that's left over, 6 times the 1x is 6x. Let's go to the second fraction. 12 up on top divided by 3 on the bottom. What's 12 divided by 3? Four. 4. So that divides, you get a 4, and then when you multiply 2 times 4, what do you get? You get 8, a plus 8. And then over here on the last one, 12 up on top, divided by 4 on the bottom, what do you get? 3. And then you got the 3 that's up on top times 3, what do I get? 9. So equals 9. So we got rid of all fractions at the same time. Check it out. It's the same equation. 
just done a lot faster. We got rid of all fractions at the same time, okay? So if we were to solve this quickly, subtract eight, subtract eight, the eights disappear, eight take away eight is zero. You have six X equaling nine take away eight is one. Final step would be to get rid of that multiplication of six by dividing by six, dividing by six, and you can't do that, so you're gonna leave it X equals one sixth. There's your answer for that one, okay? Um, let me bring up the last one, number 11. That one is a piece of cake compared to all the rest. Why? How do I get rid of the fraction? Multiply by five. So put times five, which will cancel out, and then times five over here, because what you do to one side, do to the other. What do I have left? 2x minus four, equaling six times five is 30. And then? Add four to get rid of the minus four. What you do to one side, do to the other side, you will end up with 2x equaling 34, which is really saying two times x equals 34. So what do I do to get rid of the multiplication of two? Yep, divide by two, giving us a final answer, x equals 17. And again, you can use calculators. So why did I do this ridiculous, ridiculously long class opener? Because it gave us an opportunity to work with uh, solving equations that have more than one fraction. Uh, on the worksheet I'm about to pass out, as you can see, there are some <laughs> equations that have three fractions in them, okay? Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, you guys requested me to do number eight. Uh, let's do it. I want to get rid of fractions. I could choose to get rid of one fraction at a time, or I could get, choose to get rid of all fractions at the same time. Now, let's say, let's say that you're choosing to get rid of one fraction at a time. Here's some advice. Get rid of the fraction that has the biggest denominator. Okay? So the biggest denominator is what? 12. So if you want to get rid of one at a time, go ahead and multiply by 12, by 12, by 12. Now, why is that? Because if you go for the bigger one, maybe you'll be able to kill two birds or three birds with one stone. What do I mean by that? We already know that 12 over 12 cancels out. So we end up with the equal sign and a 71. Yeah, but right here, the 12 over 4, you could actually reduce it. Right? If it were like a 12 over like a 5, then yeah, you'd have to multiply top with the top and put it over 5, if it were a 5. But it's a 4, and 12 is divisible by 4. So yeah, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So up on top, you have the 3K times 3, which is a total of 9K, positive 9K. And then right here, 12, you could multiply 12 times 2 and get 24 over 3, which is 8. Or you could say 12 divided by 3 is what? 4. four. And 4 times 2 is the same thing, 8. Eight. So we did technically get rid of all fractions at the same time, luckily, because that bigger denominator was the common denominator, the LCD. Okay, And then from there, you just solve the way you normally would uh, by subtracting 8, subtracting 8, that would give you 9k equaling 63, which is really a 9 times k. You don't want multiplication of 9, so you divide by 9, divide by 9, giving you k equals 7. All right, guys, I'm going to end this video here. Good luck.